Do not forget, you can support the channel with a like and you can also subscribe to be aware of the latest published videos. Thank you. We hope that here you can find the latest news, ideas and discoveries from the These skull collecting for Micah Archboldy from Florida are proving to be more than just generalists. Florida's skull collecting ant for Micah Archboldy next to trap jaw ant body parts that are found throughout its underground nest. A member of Formica Archboldi, Florida's skull collecting ants, next to trap jaw ant heads that are found throughout its underground nest. For 60 years, scientists observing Formica Archboldi, a species of ant native to Florida, have documented something dot 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 odd. The ants' underground nests are littered with skulls and other body parts, primarily of odontometches, trap jaw ants. Trap jaws are formidable predatory badasses, if Archboldi are not. So what's going on? A new study sorts out the mystery, but discovers an even bigger oddity. Of the 15,000 or so ant species out there, relatively few are prey specialists. Although there have been documented millipede munchers and termite crunchers, most ants are generalists when it comes to what they eat. Finding a lot of decapitated heads in an ant nest does, however, tend to make researchers curious about the matter. There have been no documented predator-prey interactions in the wild between skull collecting and trap jaw ants. But entomologists hypothesize that F. Archboldi might just be a prey specialist of trap jaw ants, a particular rarity within its generally generalist subfamily. What's especially peculiar about going after trap jaws is that these ants are no easy targets. Members of the trap jaw genus Odontometchus sport spring-loaded mandibles that they use both defensively and for capturing prey, striking more than 41 times per second. Like the dread pirate Roberts, they're not to be trifled with. Florida's skull-collecting ants, a mystifying finding. To understand F. Archboldi's unusual nest decorating aesthetic, study author Adrian Smith of the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences went to Florida. There, he collected samples of both Formica Archboldi and neighboring Odontometchus ants from three different locations. Two trap jaw species, found in close proximity to the skull collectors, were sampled for the study. And Smith discovered that a certain biochemical profile of skull collecting F. Archboldi was a close match to that of the Odontometchus found at the same site. Ants, like all insects, are coated in a layer of wax called cuticular hydrocarbon. The waxy stuff probably first evolved to prevent the animals from drying out. Over time, however, many insects have come to use the layer as a means of communication to distinguish reproductive status, for example. The specific chemical signature of cuticular hydrocarbons varies widely between species and even sometimes within a species, though, among ants, intraspecies variation is considered uncommon. For example, from Finland to the British Isles, Formica species show little variation in their cuticular hydrocarbon profiles. Trap jaw style hydrocarbon profiles. However, previous research on trap jaw ants has shown that, within both the genus and specific species, cuticular hydrocarbon profiles can vary. The profiles can be used to distinguish between nestmates and outsiders, for example. The Florida trap jaw ant Obrunius, the most prevalent Odontometchus species that overlaps with Formica archboldi, has high levels of hydrocarbon variation between populations. Smith found that the hydrocarbon profiles of the skull enthusiast F. archboldi he collected were not only remarkably similar to that of Odontometchus, but that these chemical signatures varied from one location to the next, mimicking the variation seen within Obrunius between those same sites. In other words, across populations, the chemical calling cards of F. archboldi were more similar to that of their neighboring Odontometchus than to other populations of their own species. And don't think it's living in a similar environment or having a similar diet that results in similar chemical profiles. Smith found that the F. archboldi ants retain their trap jaw-like hydrocarbon profiles even after living in the lab for several months. To test what advantage this might provide, and to figure out if it explained the whole deal with the Odontometchus heads piled up in the skull collector's nests, Smith built a kind of ant thunderdome. Skull collecting ants as prey specialists. In a series of contests, Smith paired one live trap jaw ant and one live formica ant, either the skull collecting F. archboldi or F. palidefulva, which also shares territory with the same Odontometchus species but has no known association with the trap jaws. The insects were placed in a 28mm test arena where their subsequent aggressive interaction was filmed at high speed. The ants were, however, immediately separated after the dust up. Smith found that in one out of ten contests, F. palite fulva successfully bested the trap jaw ant, which was unable to walk around the arena afterward but was not fully immobilized. The stats were a little different for F. archboldi, however, in ten out of ten contests, the trap jaw ant was unable to walk around the arena and, in seven of those ten matches, the trap jaw was completely immobilized. If you're imagining ants ripping each other apart, hang on. That's not what the contests were about. Both Formica species use Formic spray to immobilize prey and also as a defense. 
The chemical composition of the spray is the same for both species, so F. Archboldi's Kikasuri is not down to using some extra potent formulation. Smith believes that F. Archboldi might just be more efficient at spraying, though more research needs to be done. In another experiment, when presented with freshly freeze-killed and thawed trap jaws, F. Archboldi ants happily took the insect into their nest, decapitating it and treating it as prey. This behavior explains how so many trap jaw heads turn up in their nests in the wild. And, along with their more efficient trap jaw takedowns, it offers support for the idea that the skull collectors are rare prey specialists. Skull collectors and trap jaws interaction T-A-K-E-A-W-A-Y The big question, how does the unique matchy matchiness of the F. Archboldi and trap jaw hydrocarbon profiles that Smith discovered fit into this potential predator-prey relationship? Scientists do see that kind of chemical mimicry in nature, most typically in host-parasite relationships. There is no evidence, however, that kind of relationship exists between F. Archboldi and Odontomachus. In his research, Smith found no suggestion that having a matching hydrocarbon profile correlated with behavior in either the skull collectors or the trap jaws. He used both matched and mismatched profiles in his experiments and reported no differences in how the ants interacted. He did not rule out, however, the possibility that differences were too subtle to be picked up in the experiments as designed. Smith does believe that the interspecies hydrocarbon profile similarities and population-specific variation points to Formica archboldi and Odontomachus coexisting for a long period and some selective advantage for F. archboldi to evolve that unusual trait. It's possible, he notes, that parasitism plays a role, but not in the way you might think. Another ant, Polyergus oligergus, is a social parasite of F. archboldi, and Smith thinks that the skull collectors may have evolved Odontomachus mimicry to chemically camouflage themselves from their own pesky parasite confirming that notion would require significantly more research into how all three ants interact, however, and was far beyond the scope of the current study.